Hello, hello, YouTube friends. Randy here with We Crafty Creations for a, another awesome video for you guys. Uh, today we're going to start a series on photography. There's going to be several videos that will be in the photography uh, series, but uh, today we're going to start specifically talking about light boxes and how to use them and, you know, just some general tips and tricks. Uh, I'm also going to do some uh, videos videos or at least one video on using natural light. However, for me, I can't do natural light any old day I want to because I live in the Pacific Northwest. There are a lot of cloudy days in the winter and it being January, uh, it's a very cloudy rainy day today. So there's no chance for me to get any good natural light in my home or outside. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, we're also going to talk about editing the photos and softwares in a different video. And we'll also talk about things like props, different ideas of different types of photos that you can take and stuff like that. But those will all be uh, covered specifically in, in one particular video. But today I wanted to talk a little bit about light boxes. Um, this is the light box that I had had since March of 2021. It just cost me just under $20 and I got it from Amazon. And um, it is 12 inches by 12 inches. And it advertises 80 pieces LED beads. And so that's the light uh, bar that's along the top of it. It's like a circle along the top of it. And that's how many separate little LED lights are in it, basically. Um, and that affects how bright, you know, the light can get. And it, it adjusts and can get brighter or darker. This one has a, a softer light, a yellower light, and then a more of a blue light. And, you know, had a lot of settings. And it was really great. I used it for a really long time. It was pretty flimsy. Um, just the material of it, it didn't, uh, it sat on my desk with a bunch of other stuff and it just, I couldn't put anything on top of it. Uh, the way that these work, there's a hole on the top of it that like a little flap you could put up and then you could set your cell phone on top of it and you could take a picture from the top. And unfortunately, when I set my cell phone on top of it, it would like really bow down <laughs> and it would make me really nervous, you know, that it just, and it wouldn't be a straight photo anymore either. So it was kind of annoying. Um, the other complaint that I had with it is it came with these little backdrops and the, the backdrops are like extremely bright primary colors just kind of reminds me of like what you would paint a kindergarten classroom or something and it just doesn't go with my products and it probably wouldn't go with most of y'all's products so that's something to keep in mind too and it was made of a material that was sort of a fabric like a felty but also with little tiny holes in it. it almost looked like paper towels or something and so it just didn't look nice in the background of photos I never used them at all um, and it's just kind of one of those things that comes with it but you don't ever use it kind of thing so I just recently purchased this light box and just got it set up it's also 12 by 12 it is an extra 15 bucks basically um, but something to keep in mind this particular light box right here it's now $25 on Amazon so the prices can, you know, change a little bit. But this right here, um, and I can put a link to the both of these in, in the bottom of the ad in case somebody wants to check them out. But there are tons and tons of light boxes on Amazon. It's hard, though, to purchase something without being able to see it and, and play with it. Um, but this one is the same size. Uh, it's black on the outside. The inside has sort of a metallic foil material to it, so it's very reflective. Um, it's, yeah, it's more sturdy, so it doesn't have that feeling like I can't set something on top of it, that kind of thing, which is really nice. And then the, um, the little backdrops, I don't know why they're showing these covered in water. It's weird. It's a, it's a weird little video, um, but they're a little bit less vibrant. Uh, this is actually not a very accurate picture compared to what these really are in real life. This white one is actually light gray. And then this one that's kind of an orangish color on top is more of a tan color. So that's pretty nice um, because those are colors that I would put in the background of my photos. The gray and the tan one specifically um, are ones that I would, you know, would use. So that's really nice. Uh, they're, they're like, you can easily wipe them down. So that's the point of them showing this water, I guess, kind of silly. But this light box 
is 112 pieces LED beads instead of 80. So it's got quite a bit more um, of, the, of the lights. And then the reflective sides with this silverish thing is makes it even brighter. Uh, one thing that's really nice as well is it comes with um, these sort of transparent, but not transparent... I don't, can't think of quite the word for it, but it's just sort of a little bit see-through um, material that you can actually put uh, over the lights, um, and it kind of droops down a little bit from the lights and hangs off the top, and it's a filter, and so that allows for the um, shadows to not be so intense on your on your product. So I did take two pictures here. I have... Um, these look the same to me. Maybe I'm just being crazy. They, they're not the same. This one, um, you can see the circle around it of the shadow. It doesn't look as extreme as I thought it would look. For some reason, when I was looking at it before, it looked more extreme than that. I don't know. I'm sure I'm just remembering it wrong. Um, and then this is with the filter. And so it just softens up that shadow. It doesn't make the shadows so harsh, um, which can be really nice for your photos. And it's, it's a nice thing to have. So I really like the fact that it has that little filter piece on that you can add to it, basically. Um, so a couple of things. I have a couple other examples, basically. This is a picture of one of my products outside. This was taken last summer or fall um, when there was a, a sunny day. Uh, when you take things out, pictures outside, you do want to make sure it's not in direct sunlight. Um, something important to kind of keep in mind. And we'll go into that more in a separate video where we're going to talk a lot about how to take pictures outside in, in the natural light or inside near a window, that kind of thing. Um, but here's that picture versus the same item in the shadow box and this did not have that filter over the light because I had to take this photo I wanted it to be the same you know as close as possible from the top down and this is laying flat down and so um, I couldn't do that because that the lights go around the top and then the hole is in the middle that you can take a picture but if you put that filter over it then you can't actually take a picture through that you'd have to take a picture through the front of it in a different angle so I could have probably found a way to do it a little bit better but um, just ignore how harsh the lines are there but overall I personally feel that outside in natural light is always best if you have a choice um, and then here's a picture that I took with my old light box and then here's a picture with the new light box. It's not at the same angle, so it might not be, you know, the best comparison. But um, I really like this gray, gray material that's underneath it. This is a piece of flooring. It's like faux granite or something, you know. And so that's kind of a, a, a nice idea. And we'll, we'll go more into props and different things in future videos, but just something to keep in mind. Um, so what else did I want to say about the light boxes? Because that's really what this video is more so about than anything. Um, when choosing a light box, yeah, the important things to think of is uh, that filtering option is really nice. You could try to make something yourself with that like um, a really thin sheet or something that could go in between the light and the product to kind of filter it through um, but these things are really cool that this comes with because they have little bits of um, I always forget the word for this I don't know why but it's like a weird thing that happens to me velcro there we go <laughs> just like what is that called velcro along the top edges of the of the box and so it allows you to just stick it on there and it's easy to take off and so it's you know obviously more convenient than trying to cut a piece of sheet to the right size and figure out a way to do it but there totally is a way um, there are also light boxes out there that don't have lights in them uh, sounds funny. I don't know if you want to call it something else, but basically it's something that you could use to take outside um, or somewhere where you just use your own lighting in your house or something, but it helps to soften the shadows. So that can be really helpful as well. Um, and of course, the the amount of light options that it has can, can be really helpful to be able to control how bright you 
do this. And of course the size is really important. That's probably the most important thing. I have these that are only 12 by 12. My products are fairly small. A lot of my products are two inches. That's a very common size for many of my products. And some of them come in sets, um, you know, like a set of four magnets or six magnets. And then some of these are only one to two inches each. Um, but overall, you know, I'm this, this one's like six inches. Um, overall that's kind of my biggest size so a 12 by 12 box works really well for me at some point I did buy a bigger box I don't recall exactly how big it was but it was just I'm one of those people I just want this thing to be set up at all times and so that way when I get a chance I can go and take a few photos I don't want to be storing this away somewhere and then pull it out and set it up every time I want to take some pictures of my products and that takes up a lot of space if you have a big one that doesn't, you know, that, that takes up a lot of space for you. So it just really depends on your situation. Uh, and the most important thing when it comes to photography and doing this stuff is just to experiment a little bit. I mean, it's not going to be any fun if you buy a light box and you hate something about it. And then you have to deal with returning it or... You know, you're going to just try to resell it and buy another one or whatever. So it's good to try to do your research and figure out what, you know, what you might like. Of course, it's good to look at reviews as well when you're looking at these. Um, but yeah, I really like this one. I could just tell by looking at it that it was sturdier for the the you know the material of the actual box it just looked sturdier I mean I could never be sure but I it looked like it was going to be sturdier and then also these um you know just looked nicer than that other material you can't really tell from this picture what these look like but trust me they just they don't look good under your product and you're going to end up doing a lot of editing to try to make this look nice I mean with these photos I did some cropping and that's basically it and I think that is a very clear concise picture of my product um, it might be a little bit boring uh, just to have a picture like this and like I said we're going to make some other videos and we're going to go over some different options for props in the background for you know different different ways to take your your product photos different ideas of of ways to do that you don't really want only one or two photos for your listings you really want to have several photos giving them the idea of the texture giving them you know the idea of how it looks from every angle and things like that you want that shopper who is looking at your item to feel like they know what that's going to be like when they get it you don't want them to have questions and the best way to do that is through photography now of course you know when i'm trying to decide if i want to buy a light box I'm doing the same thing that my customers are doing when they're trying to decide on buying a gift for their mom for Christmas. So it's kind of the same thing if you really think about it. So think, try to think about it in those terms. Try to think like a customer. It's always important for us to do that as small business owners. And, you know, I really think it will be helpful. Um, and I also wanted to mention one other thing in this video, and then I'll stop rambling on. <laughs> and that is uh, that I did a... Um, poll in my Facebook group, Go Imagine Help. And in that Facebook group, I asked, what do people want to see more videos on? And uh, photography was one of them that was very high up. And then also another one that got a lot of votes was how to get featured on the Go Imagine main page or on one of their special, they have, they have some different ways that you can get featured. And Honestly, the number one way to get featured on anything is to have good photography. That is number one, the most important thing. Um, that would be on Etsy. That would be, you know, anywhere. And that is also the number one way to make more sales is to have good photos. Regardless of how much time you spend on your products and how wonderful they really are, if the photos are blurry, if they're dim, um, if they have weird things in the background, if there's something that's going to distract somebody, or if they see the photos and they still have a lot of questions and they don't really trust it and they don't really know how big it is or, you know, there's just something that's kind of making them wonder, then you're just losing that chance of making that sale as they might, you know, stray away. And you really want people to impulse buy and, and buy quickly. And if they're thinking it over and thinking it over, then they might forget about you, you know, or they might just not buy anything at all or something. So... 
from anybody. You know, they might just decide, oh, I don't even need this at all, that kind of thing. So anyways, that's about all that I have for this video. I just wanted to start out with this particular uh, part in the photography series because I did just buy this new light box and I had a lot of thoughts about the differences and I really do think that um, you can still take really good photos using a light box versus outdoors if you have to. So I just wanted to kind of give that um, a place in this photography series um, but please make sure to subscribe and watch for new videos coming out as we'll cover all the different aspects. Um, just as far as taking photos in natural light, I don't know for sure when I'm going to get that video out because we have a lot of weather coming our way. In fact, we haven't had any snow yet and it's already, what, January I don't even know what the date is today, but it's like the 6th or something. Um, and we normally, every year recently, we've had snow before now. So, but we might be getting some snow in the next week or so, it looks like. So, and lots and lots of rain. So, anyways, hope everybody is having a great new year so far. And um, please don't don't shy away from leaving me a comment on here with a question or a suggestion. And I'll be glad to, to talk to you and look into that. Um, and hope to see you guys again real soon.